Hey, this is Bill from Calwood Percussion, and today I want to talk about rope tension concert bass drums. Now, I am a huge fan of rope tension bass drums in a modern orchestral setting for a bunch of reasons. For one thing, they're super easy to tune. Uh, for another, with virtually no hardware on the drum, the, the resonant frequency of the instrument is lower, which gives you a lower effective tuning range. That means you can tune this to a lower pitch than a comparably sized rod tension drum without the head starting to sound papery, like the drum will still fully resonate. Sort of connected to that is the, the really wide dynamic range that these things have. You can still play like an absolute pianissimo roll on this with a tune very, very low, and still have a rich fundamental sound. Uh, they're great. And then also, with no hardware on this drum, there's nothing on this that can rattle. You're never chasing down rattles with a rope tension concert bass drum. The one question that I most often get about these though when I'm, I'm talking to people about this type of instrument is, hey, that's all cool, but like, what happens when I have to change a head? And I can totally understand why, you know, if you, if you don't use rope tension drums a lot, if you don't have a lot of experience with it, that could seem like a really intimidating thing. But honestly, it's just not that big of a deal. And so that's why I wanted to make this video to show just how easy it is to change heads on a drum like this. First thing, obviously, is to take the drum off the stand and put it up on a table or a workbench. And when you do, put it on whatever working surface you're gonna use. You wanna make sure that the knot and drag rope are on the bottom. It's gonna make it a lot easier when we go to uh, unlace this thing. So the first step is to loosen all the ears. So we're gonna fully disengage all the ears all the way around the drum. The next step is we're gonna take out the drag rope, undo this pigtail knot, and then we're gonna start loosening the rope. However it's secured on the end, you just pull out the end of the rope and untie that last little loop. And from here, this is just sort of a chain of loops and you can just pull it and all those knots come right out. Just like that. Take this, put it on top of the drum. So otherwise uh, the rope will pick up a lot of dust. We don't want that. This knot, what we call a pigtail, is really just the rope wrapped up around itself. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But uh, there's usually some type of knot here at the end of it that's just keeping the pigtail from coming out. So you just wanna loosen that. And now, when you have only the pigtail left, to take this out, you just pull. And then you're ready to go. Once we're to this point, you wanna just pull the rope all the way out from the ice place. Now, again, when you're doing this, if the, the rope falls on the floor a lot, it's, it's always gonna wind up getting pretty dusty. Um, I will generally either just keep throwing the rope back up on top of the drum as I'm working, or I'll grab an old bass drum head and just throw it on the ground um, in front of the, the work area so that as I'm putting the rope down, it's always just going on that, that old bass head. We don't have to unlace this whole drum to change heads. Uh, all we have to do is unlace to about here, and then from there, we're just loosening. So um, to begin, you wanna pull the rope back through this ear. And then out through the hoop. Now sometimes, uh, sometimes this just comes out very easily and then sometimes it, it kind of wants to, to stick a little bit. If that happens, if you twist the rope into the lay of the rope so that the coil tightens, then it makes it a little bit more rigid and easy to push through the hole. So we're gonna take this all the way out and then out the other side. And now we can remove this first ear. And we're gonna do the same thing here on the bottom. If you can pull the drum so you're sort of working off the edge of a table when you do this, it makes it a lot easier. put these ears aside. From this point, all we have to do is loosen uh, all the way around and then we'll be able to get the head out. We need to have most of our slack in like maybe, I don't know, the first third of the drum because this is where we're gonna slide the head out. 
uh, and then the the rest of the way around the drum, it needs to be loose enough that it has some slack, but but most of the most of the loosening is going to happen around here. You can see that there's a lot of slack in each of these, and that should be enough. So from now, all that's left to do is pull this slack back around so that all of these are, they don't have to be loose with a lot of slack like this, they just have to not be tight. should be able to just slide the head right out. Just like that. If you need to change both heads, uh, you can pull the shell out and pull out this bottom head, or, you know, put this head back on, bring the hoop back up, and just flip the whole thing over and slide out the, the other head. Either way, whatever, uh, whatever feels easier to you. Um, regardless, at this point, I uh, want to do whatever, to, if you need, need to clean up the bearing edge, you know, if there's a bunch of dust in there, if you haven't done this in a while, whatever you need to do to, to sort of clean this uh, and, and prep it for the new head. Normally, uh, I'll just get a soft rag and kind of wipe off the bearing edge, get rid of any dust. Um, you know, sometimes maybe I'll, I'll put a little bit of wax or something on the edge, just depends on the state of the drum, but uh, uh, this one is ready to go, so, uh, we're just gonna slide the new head in here and pull the hoop back up and it'll be ready to tension. All right, now that we've got the new head on and we've got the hoop back in its place, but we have not yet pulled tension, now is the perfect time to make sure everything is oriented correctly. So, you know, with the head, you wanna make sure that the logos are facing whatever direction you want them to relative to, you know, the top of the drum. And we wanna make sure that the shell is oriented correctly to the hoops. Now because it's a free floater, orientation of the shell of the hoops doesn't super matter as long as the rope isn't gonna get in the way of the hooks. Uh, but I do like to have the knot on the bottom of the drum. I just think it looks nicer. So I'll set the eye splice somewhere near the bottom of the drum. And then I wanna make sure that the, the mounting hooks are in line with holes on the bottom hoop, which means holes on the top hoop will be directly in between the mounting hooks. And that way when the rope comes up, it will come up right in between the mounting hooks and not get in the way of anything. As we begin to pull tension into this drum, uh, we wanna start from where the ice splice is and go around the drum from there. With our first pass, we're not trying to get it tight. All we're doing is taking up the slack. And first, we wanna make sure that the ice splice is right snugged up against the hoop. And then we just pull the rope through until the rope is making straight lines. It doesn't have to be any tighter than that, just tight enough that it's a straight line. And we're gonna go around the drum, just bringing up the slack. reach the point where it's time to replace the ears that we took off. The way we do that is by, of course, finding the end of the rope. You're gonna put the rope through the bottom of the ear. And again, if it's a little tight, twisting the rope into, the, into itself to make it just a little bit more rigid can help. Uh, sometimes when the leather is really tight, you can take a pair of needle nose pliers or something and just, you know, kind of widen that just a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, that's not going to be necessary. 
So we bring the rope through the ear. All right, and you see that the ears all go in the same direction. Uh, if this, if it's a drum that that we made, uh, there will be a felt pad on the back of the ear that helps to prevent the shell from getting trashed up. Uh, but but either way, it's where the the rawhide lacing on the ear is is knotted, so that the back of the ear is is pretty clear. So you want to make sure that you you put it on in the correct direction, so it's going to match all the others. And now we're going to go back through the hoop. So this goes up through the first hole. Pull it all the way through. And back down to the next hole. There we go. Now we have that sitting nicely in that mortise on the hoop. And we're gonna go back down through the ear. Again, making sure that we have the ear oriented correctly so that it matches all the others. And just push this rope through. That's all set. Now we're gonna do the same process, putting the rope through the, the bottom hoop, back up through the ear, through the hoop, and to the eye splice. When we get to the eye splice, what we're gonna do is put the rope through the splice. And for now, all we have to do is just tie that off you can throw the rope on top of the drum. Now we're gonna fine tune the orientation of the shell and the hoops, make sure everything's lined up and we can get this tight. First thing to do is make sure that these hooks are actually directly above the centers of the pairs of holes on the bottom hoop. And right now that you can just kind of slide the shell around, right? It's, it's, just, it's just sitting in there. So just kind of slide it around until hooks are pretty much right aligned with uh, the center of the pairs of, of holes. Now there's, you know, there's some movement uh, just even within the head because the head isn't a tight fit on the shell. You, you wouldn't want it to be. Um, so, you know, just if you, you check one and then check a couple others or maybe look on the other side of the drum just to make sure that the drum is pretty well centered in the head. The next step is to try and get these holes centered over these holes. And we're gonna double check this in a minute, but right now we're just trying to get it in the ballpark. So that looks about right. The next thing we're gonna do is go around, tighten all the ears all the way, and we'll be able to use that to make sure that, that we have it correct. So at this point, we're gonna stand back a little bit and check for two things. First of all, are the ropes making lines that are perfectly vertical and parallel to one another? And then are all the pieces of hardware uh, actually centered in between the, the lines that the ropes create? As we're doing this, it's a good idea to check multiple points around the drum. This also helps to make sure that the, the shell is actually centered in the head as it should be. And we can see, you know, it's, it's uh, more evident on this side, actually, you know, the badge and the vents and, and these hooks, we can see that it's not quite lined up correctly. Now, it is also important to note at this point that uh, this is purely aesthetic. We can, you know, leave this exactly as it is, pull tension on it, it'll tune up fine, it'll still sound great. Uh, you'll be able to hang it on the, the stand without anything getting in the way. This is purely an aesthetic thing, but I mean, we're going to the trouble to do this, right? We may as well make it look nice. I can see that the shell needs to go this direction relative to the hoops. Uh, the easiest way to do that is loosen all the ears again, which uh, will make the, the shell move much more easily. And uh, in the process of doing that, 
It's a good idea to just check and make sure that you are aware of the logos on the heads to make sure that in the process of moving the shell, you don't move these, those around too. Once you're satisfied that you've got everything lined up the way you want it to be, now it's time to pull tension into the drum. So we're gonna begin on the, uh, the first segment of rope after the eye splice. So you begin there and just kind of pull up, make sure that's snug, loosen the ear and pull the rope through. You don't have to get crazy tight with this just so that now, you know, we have some tension on it and it's snug. And we're just gonna go around doing that for each pass of rope, just pulling up so it's snug and then pulling the tension through and just give it a little more. And doing this just totally by feel, just, you know, try to, to pull each rope so that they feel about the same in your hands and just a little kind of little tug to get it nice and snug. And now we're here, there's a lot of slack there. We don't have to really lean on this to keep it from, from releasing. As long as you're holding this, the rope is sort of pinched in the hoop. It's not gonna move. Uh, so as long as you just are holding this, you don't have to hold it real tight, it's gonna stay put. We're probably going to go around this drum one more time uh, to kind of try and, and even out the tension and just get it a little bit tighter. So for now, we don't need to worry about the pigtail yet. We can just, you know, I just pulled out my old temporary knot and I'm going to just kind of, with your arm sort of up on top of the hoop, you can kind of just use that as sort of an anchor point to help you pull because of, you know, the, the individual strands and the rope it's sort of pinched around this eye splice. So as long as I'm holding the rope up, I don't have to hold it tight. The rope's not gonna slip. So I'm just gonna pinch it right there. I'm just gonna make a little temporary knot. And that'll stay put now while we're working. Now that we've gone around the drum once, we need to check the tuning range to see how much more tension we need to pull into the drum. So with the ears all the way up like this or, or fully disengaged, that's gonna be the lowest pitch that the drum can produce at this tension. Uh, with the ears all the way down, that's gonna be the highest pitch that the drum can produce at this tension. So we're gonna check both and see uh, where that range is relative to what we're aiming for. Now, also keep in mind that with new heads on, they're probably gonna stretch just a little bit. Um, uh, the rope may too, because it was all, you know, just um, loosen and tighten up and, and things kind of settle and kind of stretch just a tiny bit. So. We want to aim for a tuning range that's just slightly higher than what we what we're actually kind of envisioning for the drum. So let's check where we're at and then we'll see what we need to do. Okay. That is lower than we would want. Let's see what the high range sounds like. needs to come up, not a lot, but, uh, but a little bit all the way around, and then we'll check for any uneven spots. We're going to begin by going around, pulling tension exactly as we did before, leaving the ears down until we get to that rope segment to, to tighten it. Once we reach the end, we're just gonna pull out that temporary knot. Give this a tug. Pinch it down at the bottom. And another temporary knot. That's pretty good. All right, that's probably just a little lower than the lowest pitch we would want for this drum. Now let's bring it up. Hmm, 
Nice. Okay. Yeah. That's what we want. The next step is to see if any there's any weird uneven spots. Now, just playing the drum just now, I, I feel like pitch-wise we're in pretty good shape. Um, and obviously what the drum sounds like is the most important part, right? We can't, we can't tune by feeling tension. We gotta tune with our ears, but uh, checking for tension does give us some clues when something's a little bit out of whack. The way we do that is loosen all the ears and just go around and each, each pair of segments press the ropes together. And you'll feel if one is particularly loose or particularly tight. Generally speaking, the very first segment after the ice place is going to feel tight. It's with rope tension drums. That's a thing that's always very challenging to, uh, to not wind up with this segment just being considerably tighter than the rest of the drum. So it takes practice. To, to get that sorted out. But the good thing is these drums are pretty forgiving in that regard. A little bit of, of, of variation in tension, it's not gonna matter to our ears. And again, our ears are the most important part. Either way, we go around and check to feel if there's any pair of ropes or segments that uh, feel particularly tight or particularly loose. And if there is, uh, yeah, this one could probably come up a bit. If there is, here's what we do about it. These drums are, are really very forgiving in terms of tuning, and the drum sounds good, so we could leave it alone. But if you're interested in more fine tuning, this is how we're gonna approach it. So this set of segments uh, right above the badge is the one that, that feels a little bit loose. Uh, so let's just go ahead and address that. The first step is we gotta tighten all the ears, because we're gonna use the tension from the ears to help us keep the heads parallel and centered. All right, we've got everything tight. And this is the one that we were gonna try and get a little more tension out of. So we're gonna hold this side, loosen the ear, and just give this a good, a good tug. This was the only one that was bothering me. The rest of these were fine in terms of tension. So this one we're trying to add tension to the others, we're only gonna pull tension through, right? So we were adding tension to this one. These we're just gonna try and maintain. This is much easier than it sounds like it's gonna be. So now I've got this settled. I'm gonna bring this ear up. I'm gonna just pull, pull that through, pull it through, but not really sit on it to, to try and get more. I'm just gonna leave it, leave it about like it is. And do the same thing here. Pull it through, pull it just hard enough that it, it stay. you can feel this in your hands too. Pull it just hard enough that it stays snug, about like that, but we don't need to really crank on these. We added tension and we're now moving that tension across the drum. Like tuning any other drum, uh, it, it takes practice to get these things to, to be really dialed in. These type of drums are pretty forgiving. This isn't really necessary, but it's good to know how to do. All right. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna make sure that those all landed. Uh, this one needs a little more. That's all there is to it. Now we're gonna pull this, same as before. Do another temporary knot and just double check that everything is the way we want it to be before we button this thing up. Cool. That's maybe like just at the bottom or slightly below what I think probably the usable range of the drum is and that's what we're looking for. Now let's bring the pitch up. Cool. 
Okay, I think we're all set. Now it's time to tie the pigtail and uh, we'll be all done. We've got all the ears loosened now. We're gonna pull out this temporary knot and tie the pigtail. So if you just pinch at the bottom of your knot so it doesn't uh, snap back on you too much when you pull it out, we can release that. It's a good idea to give it just one more tug just to make sure this is nice and tight. Pigtail is a very easy knot to tie. Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure if it's really a knot. So you twist the rope into the lay of the rope so that the strands of rope coil up on themselves. So it's like you're tightening the spiral of the rope and you see it makes this kink, all right? So you get that first one and just hold it. Continue to twist the rope in the same direction and it will want to spiral onto itself and guide those spirals behind that first kink. The cool thing about this is as you continue to twist the rope so it spirals behind itself, you're actually pulling just a little bit more tension into this last strand because this is always the hardest one to, to get tight. So we're gonna continue twisting and go behind here one more time. Just give it kind of a pull. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, if you have to do more than like three or four wraps with the, the pigtail for this to feel tight, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, although aesthetically it's maybe not ideal. And a lot of times if that happens, I'll just pull it out and start over. With our pigtail done, we need to lock it in place so that it doesn't just fall out. With this rope up, we're gonna take the end and go in front of and then through. So now we pull this in and we have just that little knot is gonna keep this from falling out. And now this is gonna stay put and the tension is gonna stay. Drag rope is just a rope daisy chain. Uh, I think it's you know used in camping and other applications. Uh, for rope tension drums, it's just uh, sort of the historical thing because with a, with a field drum when you're marching, the drag rope hangs underneath the snare and uh, ideally doesn't drag on the ground, but you get the picture. We're gonna tie this and pull the loop through. And now we have our first loop. Reach through that to grab the rope and pull to make a new loop. Reach through and pull to make a new loop and just keep on going. And this is uh, both decorative and functional in that it allows us to keep the excess rope that you need to be able to assemble and uh, tighten the drum, but you don't have rope hanging all over the place. We're gonna go underneath the ropes. So this stays up against the shell and out of the way. We're gonna go under and then just loop it around one of the ropes so it is locked in place. And the excess, you can just tuck right underneath. And there. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And if you're interested in getting one of these drums for yourself, for your organization or your school program, please feel free to drop us a line. It's calderwood.percussion at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.